Two words, vehicle dynamics. What is that? Hi, I'm Claude Ruel. I'm the president of Optimum G, company that I created in 1997. We have three activities, consulting, teaching, and uh, simulation software. Vehicle Dynamic has been part of my life for mm, nearly 50 years now. <laughs> and uh, what is it? I'm going to give you a very quick summary of it, uh, very basic. But as always, the basic is super important. So what's Vehicle Dynamic? The first definition, super short, is the study of a vehicle in motion. And the second one is the study of a car behavior reacting to the driver input. Driver input with or without driver aid. We are speaking about ESP, ABS, active differential, active uh, suspension, active uh, damping. So that is the very basic definition. A little bit more of that. Uh, it's a mean or in or by which someone travel or something is uh, carried. Think about a truck, for example, safely. And then in that case, you have active safety and passive safety. In our seminar, we do not focus a lot on passive safety. It's important, of course, but passive safety means the crash is going to happen. What can you do with the crushable structure, with the airbag, with the seat belt, uh, with the helmet, with the hands device, all these things to limit the damage. Basically, passive safety is damage control. Active safety is, in simple word, ability to avoid a crash. Comfortably, uh, now we are speaking about human interface and ergonomics. Of course, the notion of comfort on the passenger car is not the one of the race car. Uh, but still, you know, in racing, it's still to make a, a big difference in terms of the, uh, the tiredness uh, of the driver. Now, uh, human interface and ergonomics, when you think about that, what are the five senses? Touch, hear, sight, smell, and taste. Mm, I don't think we taste the car, mm, unless you bite the steering wheel. Definitely the touch to hear, the sight and the smell are uh, very important. Smelling clutch, smelling engine, smelling fuel, smelling oil, smelling exhaust, uh, smelling tires also. But uh, what are the interactions? Where does it uh, happen? Steering wheel, seat, headrest, pedal box, cockpit, windscreen, mirror, so this is where the interaction is happening. I have to say that the car is supposed to listen to what the driver say, but it's also to speak to the driver in terms of um, the forces and moment acting on the tire need to be sent back to the driver. And how is he going to feel about that? That's where the ergonomy is making a big, big difference. All right. Uh, we will define comfort for a race car, a sport car, um, and look at all the system and subsystems that influence comfort. And then economically, and even in racing, you know, you have budget, the cost of use, the maintenance, the reliability, all that things need to be taken into account. Now, there are three essential models when you speak about a car design. You have the power model, whether it's an uh, internal combustion engine, whether it's electrical motor, whether they are hybrid, hydrogen, fuel cell, there are many possibilities. The, the drivetrain, of course, because um, you need to go from the power to the wheels and the tire. And then you have the chassis. Now, very interesting, we need to be careful with that. In Japan, for example, the word chassis means the frame or the monocoque, plus the steering, uh, the suspension, the brake, uh, the wheels and the tire. So, yeah, the frame, the suspension, the steering, the brakes, the wheels and the tires, okay. And then you have the bodywork which has a huge influence on the chassis, uh, the, the frame stiffness, and of course, play a big role on the ironic forces and moment, okay, uh, that occur from the wheel and from the tire, and to the wheel and to the tire, sorry. Now at the end, whether you have the power module, the chassis module, the body module, they all come back to only one thing, the tire. The forces and moment uh, uh, occurring the tire, which are slip angle, uh, sleep ratio, vertical load, driving and acceleration torque, camber, speed itself, uh, temperature of the tire, pressure of the tire, all that influence and that's the reason why. Uh, you start from the tire, you finish by the tire. Uh, all the input uh, that the driver has on the front of the steering 
and the brakes go to the tire and then the tire contact patch retransmit these forces back to the suspension, the chassis, to the driver who feels the car with his shoulder, with his head, with his leg. That's where the system is working and the control, the loop is uh, closed. So it's all about the tire uh, contact patch. Everything is happening in there. You know, in my company, we spend a lot of uh, time on tires. Um, we're not in love with time more than we are with iron and mic kinematics and so on, but I know that everything is happening in these four contact patch guys. That's where all this notion of great balance control and stability are occurring, so understanding the tie is very important. All right, so the car listen, obey and speak to the driver. The, what do I mean? The driver is going to give an input to the, uh, the car with the steering, with the throttle and with the brake. And is the car able to listen to what the driver uh, asks it to do? Can he receive this input? Compliance, for example, is going to be the biggest enemy of the transmission of input to the car, um, to the tires. Um, I keep saying that compliance is the uh, biggest enemy of the driver control and confidence. No, because the vehicle does what the driver wants it to do. So that's the response. Does the car obeys to what the driver wants the car to do? And then there is also the feedback after that. Is the car speaking to the driver? So that's the control loop that you have there. And that is, a, again, a control loop without any uh, driver aid. So, of course, let's not forget that the effect that this control loop uh, will have on the occupants. I know in race car you have only rally where you have a, a co-driver. Uh, and on the car itself in terms of reliability, tire degradation, fuel consumption and so on. Well, fuel energy consumption. Now, how do you study vehicle dynamic? They are the input from the driver. There is a mathematical model, which is usually a set of differential equations, usually second order. You don't go further, really. And you have obviously the output, okay? And this is the control loop. And the control loop could be also uh, augmented with ABS, ESP, traction control, diff control, active suspension, power steering, uh, sometimes anti roll bar control. You can make it simple or you can make it complicated. Uh, it depends on the number of degree of freedom that you want to put in the, in the car. What are the input? Well, uh, we can look at that, but you have a mathematical model, uh, uh, which is a set of differential equations, I said, and the output, car behavior. Forces and movement on the steering, the brakes, the throttle, the gear shift, the clutch, the handbrake for rally car, and all the other possible adjustments that the driver can do, you know, when you look at the steering wheel of Formula One, the brake balance, uh, the ECU, uh, the diff control, okay? Now, all these mathematical models are governed by Newton and Euler laws. If you understand Newton and Euler, and you have to, you have already a better idea of how you go from the input to the output. And then, uh, which means that you need to know masses, their center of gravity location, suspend, non-suspended mass, uh, their inertia also, the kinematic and the compliance. Uh, most of students do not understand compliance. It's actually uh, one of the things which is either ignored or underestimated. Nothing is rigid. You always will have compliance. The stiffness, the damping, the aerodynamic, which means downforce, drag, aerobalance, stability, uh, uh, stability to yaw, stability to roll. And the output are the forces and moment on the tire that will influence the distance, the speed, the acceleration, the frequency, and they will be qualified and quantified with ISO test result. Quick little parenthesis here. Whether you are student or race engineer, most of the people are obsessed with lap time simulation. Don't get me wrong, lap time is the most important things that count. Mm, lap time and lap time consistency. It's not because you do the pole position that you have the quickest lap. But what count is also the way a car responds to a steering input. So there are some ISO tests, uh, skid pad, double lane change, step steer. You could learn so many things from this thing uh, that about, for example, lateral acceleration, response time, your velocity damping, which will help you to after that will help you to understand the car and effectively produce quickest lap time. Um, and then the magic number, like 
load transfer distribution or total lateral transfer distribution like aero balance, like your velocity damping, lateral acceleration, response time, lap time and lap time consistency, and obvious, obviously the driver feedback. It's not fair to only look at the data. Driver feedback is absolutely essential, especially when you have experienced driver. Simple then complicated, guys. Um, you have um, the foundation, then the wall, then the roof, not the other way around, okay? So I would advise you to start with something simple, like a simple uh, quarter car model like this. And then you can go more and more uh, sophisticated. But simple, then complicated, not the other way around. Don't make it too complicated to start with. You're going to lose yourself. Um, so what does that mean? Start with a mass point simulation. Then start with a two-wheel model steady state, then a two-wheel model transient, then a four-wheel model steady state, then a four-wheel model transient. Start with steady state, then quasi-steady state, like the your moment versus lateral acceleration diagram, which is a very good tool. Uh, is it perfect? No. Transient is better, but do simple, then complicated. Uh, the order of the equation, as I said, you really go more than the second order. The number of degree of freedom. It's very interesting. I ask students, they do a simulation. How many degree of freedom do you have? We don't know. Okay. That's important to know that because it helps uh, help you to evaluate the complexity and the progression into the complexity of your vehicle dynamic model. And then time, uh, are you working the time or the frequency in the main? I have actually, uh, it's easier to teach the body diagram with electrical engineer than mechanical engineer, by the way. But the body diagram is an amazing tool to uh, 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 simulate, understand and develop a car and analyze the test data, not only simulation, but analyze test data. So that's what it is. And after that, you can come to the understanding of the performance synthesis, which start with the middle of the screen, the tire uh, traction lips and the four uh, traction lips exploitation and the your moment, which is depending on the tire, of the kinematics, of the iron mic, of the drive input, and the road transfer and the road profile, micro and micro uh, roughness. That is something which is part of another uh, presentation where we go in the, into the detail of the component of what we call at OptimMG the performance synthesis. If there is only one phrase that would I would use to summarize this very quick presentation, simple, then complicate, not the other way around. Good luck. I have nearly 50 years of experience in race car engineering and vehicle dynamics. And one of the things that I've learned is that if you know why you are winning, you will be able to win again. And if you don't know your strength, you don't know your weaknesses. One of the passion that I have is to share my knowledge. And at OptimumG, we have two main seminars that are four days, quite intensive, but I think they are worth the money and the time. An Applied Vehicle Dynamics Seminar, where we go through tires, kinematics, aerodynamics, load transfer, uh, steady state, transient, uh, and uh, basically help you in the concept, simulation, manufacturing, and testing and development of your car. And the other seminar is, okay, your car does exist, you go on the track, how do you analyze the data? It's a data-driven performance engineering. You cannot improve something you don't measure. And without data, you are just another person with an opinion. In this seminar, we will teach you KPI, Key Performance Indicator, how to observe, analyze, measure, compare, and improve both the car and the driver. Beside our seminar, Optimum G has a lot of activities in consulting in the passenger car and the race car industry. We develop software also in uh, tire modeling software, uh, kinematic analysis, lap time simulation and vehicle dynamic. Leave us a question, leave us a link and we would love to help you. And if you want to know more, see you in the next video.